What is the final approach fix? How can you identify the final approach fix in a non-precision approach chart? And what is the biggest misconception about the final approach fix? Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from pilotclimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and if you're trying to become a better pilot or simply making your head around aviation, consider subscribing to the channel so you won't miss the next episode. First of all, before starting the video about the final approach fix, I want to make sure that you leave me in the comment below any question that you may have throughout the video. For me, it is very important that you actually understand and you get 100% of the content of this video. Let's jump right into the topic. The final approach fix is the point where the final approach part of the non-precision approach starts. The approach procedures are divided into three phases, the initial approach phase, the intermediate, intermediate approach phase and the final approach phase. So the final, from the final approach fix we'll start the final approach phase. So the last phase, the, last, the final phase before the landing. That's why it's so important that we know where the final approach fix of our, of our non precision approach is because it's really the last point where we have to make sure that we are at the right altitude and well established inbound. If you want to see a practical example of how to fly a non precision approach, I made a separate video where I've flown a VOR approach with a Cessna 172. I'll link the video in the descriptions below. For me, it's extremely important to identify where the final approach fix is when I'm flying a non precision approach in order that I organize my to make sure that I will overfly that point at the right altitude and well established inbound because at that point you want to make sure that you are in the right position. You don't want to fly above the final approach fix and you don't want to fly below the final approach fix and you don't want to fly left or right the final approach fix. This is exactly where you have to be at the altitude and established inbound. So let's jump into the whiteboard and I'll show you how can you identify where the final approach fix is in each chart. Looking at the whiteboard here, we've got two JEPs and chart of Madrid Airport. These charts are out of dated and, and are for training purposes only. But the final approach fix is identified in the same way even the, of the, on the charts of today, right? So the final approach fix is identifiable by the Maltese cross. If you look at the chart, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, okay? Here we go. So this cross here, as you can see in here, okay, it's your final approach fix. Looking at the chart next to it, okay, you've got this Maltese cross here and this is the final approach fix. That's the biggest, the most important point of the non precision approach. You need to make sure that you actually find out and identify where is it. In this case, you've got the, the FAF, the final approach fix in this case is a Mike Alpha locator. Okay, and you need to cross the final approach fix at an altitude of 3,400 feet. And in this case, instead, we've got distance 9 nautical miles from Bravo Romeo Alpha, and you need to cross the, the final approach fix at 3,900 feet. Okay no questions asked okay that's why it is extremely important that you actually identify with the altitude and the distance or the position of the final approach fix so now let's talk about the biggest mis misconception i've been flying for more than 15 years and involved in training as well for more than 10 years and many times i've seen people that are still calling the final approach fix on a precision approach on ils approach and this is completely is a, is a mistake because the final approach fix is only applicable to the non-precision approaches so precision approach doesn't have the final approach fix. But I tell you why some people are still calling the FAF on the precision approach. Let me show you another Madrid chart. Now, looking at the whiteboard here, we've got two charts of Madrid. The, the, the chart on the right is the ILS Yankee or Rockalizer Yankee running three to right. As you can see here, even though this is an ILS chart, okay, you still have the Maltese cross or your final approach fix. And that's why many people, when flying the ILS, they think that that's the FAF that is applicable to the ILS. But that's wrong because if you look up here on the chart, we've got the localizer as well procedure. And the final approach fix in this case applies for the localizer approach, not for the ILS. Because the ILS, you fly an ILS when you follow local, the localizer and the glide slope, and you, find, you fly a localizer only approach when the glide slope is not available. So it's a non precision approach, and that's why you've got the final approach fix in there. In fact, if you look on the chart on the left, which is the category two and three 
ILS in running three to right in Madrid, where you don't have any localizer, it's a precision approach only. If you look here, where normally you find the final approach fix, you will see that there is no final approach fix, and that's why, because uh, the, the reason is because there is no non precision approach, and there is only precision approach. All right, let me give you another example to make sure that this is clear. Looking at the, at the chart now, on the right side we've got the LS X-ray and the localizer X-ray running 18 right. I want to show you this chart because I want to make sure that it is clear what I'm trying to say, okay? So looking again in this area here where you've got the vertical profile of the, of the chart, you will see that the FAF is actually outside this area, which is the precision approach area. Look at that. It's actually outside. If I now I cancel, this one, everything, you will see that the final approach fix is actually above and that the, the localizer approach in this case will have a steeper descent gradient compared to the precision approach. In fact, if you go all the way down here where you can actually read the descent gradient, okay, you will see that the ILS glide slope has got a 3 degrees descent angle and the localizer descent angle is actually 3.10. So it's actually a steeper descent angle. So in this case, the guy that is flying the ILS will fly like this on the 3 degrees and the <coughs> guy that is flying the localizer will fly like this, so slightly steeper descent. And that's why the lock, the FAF in this case is actually outside the uh, precision approach area because it's for the localizer only approach. All right, so I hope you took something out of this video and you grew up a little bit today and became a better pilot. If you like the video, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel so you will not miss the next video. Coming soon, there will be a nice video and there will be a very good surprise, so make sure that you actually subscribe to the channel. Also, you can go to pilotclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. And again, if you have any question, leave a comment below and I will help you out. And I'll see you in the next one.